This is Corolla Digital. Hi, folks. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And this week, on This Week with Larry Miller, I'm going to tell you a true story about how Jerry Seinfeld and I once made Yakov Smirnov cry. We thought we were going to make him laugh, but it didn't happen right away. Listen to us for free through iTunes, and we'll see you here. CarCast is brought to you by Encore Insurance Services, LLC. For a free life insurance quote, give them a call, 866-347-5748, or go to smartterm.com. That's 866-347-5748 and smartterm.com. Now, it's time for this week's CarCast with your host, Adam Carolla, and moderator, Matt D'Andrea. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get it on. Mandate, get it on. Thank you so much for tuning in to uh, yet another CarCast. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Matt, the moderator, D'Andrea. How are you? Good. I want to hear all about SEMA when, oh, the, uh, man. when so the time nice. is right. Ralph Gilles. Did I say it right? Nice job. I just go fast. Wow. Yeah. President and Chief Executive Officer, SRT Brand Motorsport Chrysler Group. Uh, I'll just go ahead and step on it and say there's a beautiful Viper. Actually, two beautiful Vipers uh, out in the parking lot. We're going to go uh, walk around. I don't Viper. think you're giving anything away. Okay. Just having Ralph here, <laughs> yeah. I think, pretty much says there's a Viper in the parking lot. I have a little obsession. Viper's one of those things. It's uh, the automotive equivalent of the TV show. Um, oh, shit. I was about to say Living Color, but I didn't mean that. I meant the Fox <laughs> show. The Fox show that was uh, the Fox sketch show. Mad, Mad TV. TV. Yeah, it was Mad TV. <laughs> Mad TV, every single year, I would talk to the cast of Man T- Mad TV, and they would say, this is our last year. And I'd say, really? Because <laughs> you told me that last year. And they go, yeah. And then five years would go by, and they go, this is the last year. And yeah. then I go, okay. And they've just kept coming back. I feel like the Vipers a little that way. It's like, this is going to be our last batch. And then it's bigger, better, and badder the next year. Yeah. How many, which Viper, or when about our fifth version of yeah, the Viper? The, yeah, the uh, the owners, so to speak, called it Gen 5. So fifth generation. Usually the engine kind of denotes the generations. So. so what is, I mean, it's always a V10. Yeah. So they went 400, 450, 500, 600, now 640. And it's always naturally aspirated. Yes. Yeah. And it's just tweaking that motor yeah. each and every time. We've added technology like variable valve timing a couple of years back, individual coil packs, um, electronic throttle, all that kind of stuff. So and displacement, right, eight, over the yeah, years. What is it now? From, it's 8.3 liters. From It always was pretty big. It started off as 8. And I want to clear something up. It's not a truck motor. Everybody <laughs> says it came from the, the old Ram V10. Nothing to do with it. That yeah. was, Everybody it, says did it that. Ever? Did it ever? No, come, nothing. Nothing ever. It's came dimensionally from that. similar in terms of the bore centers, but that was well, a cast iron engine. And, this is all aluminum. It's all aluminum we'll, block and yeah, heads. Yeah. Hold on, because uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> the worst thing you can do is when I bought uh, my uh, Aston Martin DB9, and I said uh, that has a truck motor too. No, <laughs> it's worse. It's worse. I said. It's a it's a V12, and the guy's like, yeah, it's just basically two Ford EcoBoost V6s yeah, the time, put equivalent. together. You don't want and to it's know like, that. Wow. So you're wow, saying that's what you're telling me? It's two three thousand dollar engines welded together to form a ninety thousand dollar engine. Like I don't understand. <laughs> you know what you should say? You should say we took a sixteen cylinder Cadillac engine from the '30s and lopped off four cylinders. <laughs> or this is you know this is a murder. Merlin Marine, or this thing was in a Spitfire or something, and we took, you know, yes. don't go add it. Jesus Christ. But never a truck. <laughs> never. As a matter of fact, we remember Chrysler owned Lamborghini in the late 80s. Sure. Right? So they helped us learning how to cast something that big, because they used to cast big V12 engines all the time. So mm-hmm. our engineers spent a lot of time in Italy figuring out how to do the V10. So um, the Viper was always an aluminum block? Always. Oh. From, from day did, one. Yeah. Did not know that. I would always hear stories the Viper's got to be the number one story of, oh, uh, then the rear end came around. 
Like uh, every, every, every well, every, well, talk to Christopher Titus because he's got the best story with that, where he basically yeah. just jumped it through like half of and Willow it, Springs. Yeah, when it came out years back in '92, it was the most powerful car you could buy. You yeah, know? and it had no no modern day anything on it. I mean, you're and, you're on your own, yeah. But and it's different, like the, the styling, everything was just yeah. really kind of cartoonish different. almost, but. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like the early version. I didn't like the rims on the early version. Wait, wait. Before you say that, did you design that car too? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> I did not like those weird three spoker kind of yeah, super deep dish. Yeah, there's something about those rims I, I did not like. Uh, later on, when uh, they turned it into a coupe and they did the blue and the white styling and the sort of gurney bubbles and stuff like that, yeah. that's when yeah, I the, started the GT- to. Started to really dig, which was inspired the by the Daytona, the uh, Cobra yeah, Daytona. Cobra yeah. Daytona, yeah, yeah, many of the same features. So that big sort of uh, ducktail in the back and the long front, the white and the blue, and yeah. the, the whole, the whole nine yards. Um, so the, uh, the 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 future for the Viper and the future for you know the SRT projects in general. What what's coming up? What are we what are we looking wow, at down the road? We're in the middle of I mean obviously the Viper launched late last year. We had a horrible launch. I mean 6 months passed when we were supposed to, but you know things are picking up. We've delivered about 526 cars to owners, so we're getting there. Um it's transacting at a really high price. I mean this is the most expensive car we've ever sold through the Chrysler networks, but it's pretty cool. In terms of the future, I mean we have our, our Charger Challenger um 300 SRTs and the Grand Cherokee which has been the absolute knockout success. It's been really yeah, a physics defying machine that people have picked up on. So we're going to refresh those products next year. We have a, a fleet of uh, new SRT powertrains coming and a lot of good news um that you'll hear about midsummer. So but the bi- the big news though is is SRT mm-hmm. is a standalone brand within mm-hmm. the Chrysler Group now. So yeah. I know we have the Jeep SRT8 and we have the Challenger SRT, but really the Viper is the only thing that doesn't have. It's not a Dodge Viper anymore. Yeah. It is just SRT. And it's a bit of a test bed for us, right? It's our first application of carbon, like true carbon, the whole hood, the roof, the deck that's all carbon. First application of hot stamp aluminum, which is from the aircraft industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, a very, very advanced stability control system with five modes, you know, so you can kind of graduate with the car and it keeps you from you know the uh-huh. back end coming out type stuff so i think it was john yeah. from <laughs> system of a down the drummer from system of a down who okay told me had a little torque problem <laughs> <laughs> he did or the car but that's what's cool yeah. you know, it's not maybe he, he was in one of the, the wrong the, the, five yeah. modes that's the that's he was, was in zero mode he was in, yeah. yeah he was in the wrong mode but it's not for everybody you know it's it's definitely the the harley no, Davidson I'm, versus I'm, the ducati kind of thing i'm now uh you know I'm now. I would rather be seen in the Viper than in the Vet at the at this at this stage. I think right. I think the car is uh, better looking. It's more aggressive, and I just I think the car has evolved quite nicely. Like I I was not a fan of some of the early versions of it, but I think I think it's been it's been it didn't get breathed on all at once. It got evolved mm-hmm. into what what it is. But it's taken a really – I mean, it's kept all its over-the-top, super aggressive, in-your-face kind of stuff. But it's also just – it's it, it smoothed out a lot of the uh, rough edges yeah. of the past. It really had, looks great. We had a lot of fun designing it. We had a huge competition. Almost the entire design office was stopped everything and worked on this car for a little while. And it was great. You know? Yeah, that's cool, though, that yeah. everybody gets to get – you know. Gets to participate. It's sensuous. In, I mean, you, is there yeah. is there a now in terms of like SRT and Dodge mm-hmm. and, and Chrysler and units moved and, and that kind of stuff? It, you know, I it, it's I mean I I don't I don't own a car company, but it doesn't seem like somebody would say, "Look, we're going to make a shitload of money selling these Vipers," because <laughs> right. someone would say, "We're going to make a shitload of money selling these trucks." Yeah. And selling many other things, mm-hmm. but we'll keep this Viper out there because it's something at the car show. It looks really bitching when people come around and, and, it's and a have cool it out car there. And, you know. nailed it. It's exactly right. You know, it's a, it's our flagship. It also a lot of our engineers have come to the company because they want to touch this thing, this crazy you know vehicle that they've heard about. Um, but it's 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 not going to make a ton of money for the company. But we learn a lot from the car. We race it. Uh, we started ALMS racing again last year. Uh, which again gets us some great notoriety for the SRT brand. So it's in a way, it's our commercial yeah. for the brand. Now mm-hmm. wait, is is Tommy Kendall driving for you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now, wasn't Tommy in here before, and he was like, "I'm not getting a new race car again, especially that vintage stuff because it's too dangerous." <laughs> well, he did, right? That's what he said, right? He always tells me that. I'm like, "Well, I'm going vintage <laughs> racing this week, but thanks." We coaxed yeah. him out of retirement pretty but, much. Yeah, and now he's racing Vipers. But 
to be fair to Tommy, this ain't vintage. <laughs> no, no. And that's a good choice because he's a great guy and he's a great character. And he's he, needs a a, he needs a gurney bubble. He does. Yeah. He's it's probably the only race car out there he can fit in. Yeah, you know the race car actually is a little more roomy because we don't have the hick foam. It's all the safety foam we have to put in the real yeah. car. But he fits in the. He's given uh, thrill rides in the normal uh, Viper okay. Street Viper. Yeah, and uh, a real good guy, and great, uh, great to see him back behind the wheel or something because uh, that guy's just every second he's not on the track is just a is just a waste. Oh, he's a badass. <laughs> he's a badass. Yeah, he's and a you race driver. a lot, Adam. I enjoy watching you. Oh, thanks. I'm, uh, we're having fun. Tommy's having fun. Everyone's having fun. Matt, uh, I'm trying to have some fun. SEMA mind numbing. Oh my God, uh, Ralph was there for a while too, right? I was there all it was week. Ridiculous. But... It was it was it was easily a solid hundred and thirty thousand people. But it was it was good, it was well planned. Like we went a few years ago when it was a monster, but it was like there was a lot of, of bleed in from the locals, about twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. And those people just fill the halls and their tire kickers. This was a lot of good people doing the right business that they're supposed to be doing there. Was it is it well, you know, and I always say there's like a couple of moments where you just go, Well, this is why the terrorists hate us. Oh yeah. Well first <laughs> of all look at like, this. Like, no, we don't need any of this we, stuff. We, and yet we want it all. But I think it seems as an indicator of the economy. I mean it's I don't know it is. Fire. It, 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 <laughs> it is. It's good. So of course we, we try to chat with a bunch of the guys we can't normally talk to because of just of our location. So we talked to the Ring Brothers, and you're seeing pictures of this crazy Pantera that they built. Oh, the Ring Brothers built a Pantera? The Ring Brothers built it. We well, that. the Ring Brothers showed up with, like, three cars, by the way, but they right. built the Pantera. They built another Mustang. And I think we talked to them uh, a little about— I'm really trying to get them to bring this car in, uh, we, we talked to them a little about, you know, to me, the next trend is taking stuff with a little more of a European flavor. Yeah. By the way, I don't this like is, the way this car looks that much. It, interior by Nike. <laughs> right, I have to get inside it, maybe. <laughs> interior by Nike. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, really? I, yeah. I, I, uh, I like the idea of taking something that has a, a European flavor to it and jumping off of that point rather than, you know, oh, here's another Mustang. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a... Uh, I'd right. have to. I'm gonna have to sniff that car. Did it win? <laughs> it it did. It won everything. But um, and then our buddy Steve Strobe, who took a different direction, he had his Martini Mustang, which was very raw, and now he showed up with a fully sort of decked out like Gen two Camaro twin turbo. Uh, our buddy Tom Nelson from Nelson Racing Engines mm-hmm. built this turbo. I saw that. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, he won GM's uh, design award for this thing. This was in the HRE wheels booth, so we got a chance to talk to Alan Peltier as well. And mm. that, that guy is just such an uber nerd when it comes to wheels. He's like, yes. I, he's, he said he's got a 21-inch wheel that weighs 21 pounds. Yeah, he's— That's uh, light for a 21-inch wheel, very, right? Very That's light. really light, yeah. I, uh, you know, find the guys who do uh, all this matte painting on these cars and kick them in the nuts. For right, me, so— you? Find that booth. There was definitely less of that. Now. There Good. was less of that, and and the guys from Avery Denison that make the wraps, they've come out with a whole line of like chrome wraps and carbon fiber wraps, and and, and there's going to be now at some point, the man's going to have to get involved with this, right? Because you're going to wrap a car in chrome. I'm going to be driving behind Patton's helmet, basically. Yeah. The sun's going to hit it. I'm going to be momentarily blinded and going into an orphanage or something, <laughs> and there's going to be a lawsuit. <laughs> Or you're gonna do some sort of custom thing with some sort of hot Viking chick in a you know in a copper bra, and then my kids are gonna get upset because I'm deeply <laughs> religious. You know what I'm saying? That's There's right. gonna be something, <laughs> right? We're gonna well, have to draw the line somewhere, right? Yeah, well, no, this is America. We can we can put all the boobs we want on the hoods of our cars, but you can't tint the windows. <laughs> no, you can't tint the windows dark. As long as the cops can't see. Mm-hmm. That you're driving did, around shirtless. Did you see the self healing wrap that they had? No, it was on Carl SunTech. This company had this wrap, and you could scratch it with with wire, and it would heal itself with a blow dry, with a heat gun. I crazy. have crazy. That's cool. I have definitely seen the metal technology that co- goes back into shape, mm-hmm. which yeah. is going to be Christine. I'm, I'm guessing that the the uh, it's very Stephen King. Yeah, no, is, is it? <laughs> you're dating yourself. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's seen that movie. It's a haunted car, uh, right? It's a haunted car. Do you remember it was like what, Cujo, the haunted do you dog. What brand that car was? I, it I, was, I do. It was, yeah. Well, it, it was, was a Fury. Yes, Plymouth. Fury. It was a Plymouth Fury, and the poster said something 
about the Fury. It was like release the Fury of. Like, oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In or, Cujo, she, how, how am I the only one who knows? This? I the know, one time I, I, I bring something out that's dated. In, in in Cujo, she was trapped in a Pinto the whole time. <laughs> that with that, that much, but they're like, we're gonna shoot this whole movie. You're in the car. You're oh, and it. you're in a Pinto the whole movie. <laughs> Got to figure that out sucked. if movies like that would be famous. Oh, now. you know, another thing I mm. saw at SEMA was a guy that hits the button and the windows in the back go opaque. That can't be legal. Oh. Right? That can't be legal at all. But he just hits the button. They go opaque. He hits it again. Well, it goes talk, clear. We talked to those guys that have like the holograms where the rims are and stuff. Or you yeah, can you like can type send messages, in. messages in your rim. <laughs> You're a yeah. dick. It's just spinning around. Well, it's more for picking up chicks, I think. <laughs> oh, but, I've, I'm a dick? Yes, whatever. You don't have to say dick. You can say something else. The uh, So the... Uh, the Viper the Viper's out. It was it was delayed. Mm-hmm. It's out. I know uh, the vet's out. I know there's the competition. What if if I was uh, looking at vets and looking at Vipers? What would you say to me to get me to well, squeeze the trigger on the Viper? You know, a lot of people like to put a, pin us against each other, right? And, and I understand that we, we have two doors. We're shiny, right? <laughs> right? But they're really very different cars. You know, we're, we're 200 horsepower more than they are. I think that you know, the, I would call the Viper an exotic, right? And the Corvette mm-hmm. is a fantastic American sports car, right? But we only built, I mean, today, to this day from 1992, we've built 29,000 hunt cars, right? And Corvette has done that in one year. Right. So we're not trying to be a volume manufactured car. It's, it, so it's, I would say that if you want to, to something exclusive, something mm-hmm. that, that just puts a grin on your face and makes you feel like a rock star, then the Viper's yeah. what you want. Well, you know, it's weird. I, I feel like I need to uh, straighten people out all the time because... You know, like, take the aforementioned uh, Aston Martin. You know, people go, well, that, you know, the, the vet will beat it in a lap of the Nürburgring by eight seconds. You're like, ah, okay, not everything is yeah. that, you know. Yeah. A lot of it is just what you're buying an exotic car. Like, you, it's exclusive. It, it's not, you're taking something that's wildly impractical because all you really need is uh, all you need is a Toyota Camry, really. If you just break it down, <laughs> a Honda Civic, a Toyota Camry with uh, with, with tan interior, right. and we could all call it a life. I mean, that's all right. you really need. But the point is, is you want more because that's your income bracket, that's your personality, that's your statement, that's where you ever. Don't start bringing it's the fun. super. Yeah, but wait, and I agree. When people take this super practical talk into the into the supercar yeah. yeah. world, like when they go like. Well, you could get three of those Corvettes for the price of one of those Ferrari. It's like, yeah, yeah that's the point. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the point. My mom does oh. this all the time. I was like, it's got 640 horsepower, the new Viper. And she'd be like, where are you going to use that? And right. I was like, you know, with that attitude, I'm going to use it in your driveway. That's right, with <laughs> yeah. some bleach. That's right. And we, and we build the Viper very differently. It's built by hand in Detroit. We build six a day at best, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it's really a, kind of a bespoke idea, right? So you can get stripes you want, any interior you want. It, it becomes your own personal show car. Mm-hmm. So it's just a different formula. So, like, in, in past, in the past, I remember seeing, well, it seems like at the, the beginning it was just a red and gold package is what I saw. Mm-hmm. And then later on there was red and, and blue and white and stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't see all the colors under the rainbow. Not quite as limited as the DeLorean. <laughs> but <laughs> You're absolutely right. The car launched red. You could only get in red. Then it was and black, red. and then it was blue, and then it was yellow. But it was right. every other year. Now we have eight colors right from the start. And okay. matter of fact, we're launching about one color every three months. And right. and, and you're launching yeah. with the, the, the SRT Viper and the GTS. Yeah. What are the differences between those? So cars? the SRT Viper is kind of a back to basics machine. Not, not too many. This fur, is the frills. this is the daily driver Viper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's about a hundred thousand um, dollars. It's got you know nice interior, still wrapped, you know leather wrapped instrument panel and, and such. The GTS has got active suspension. It's got the big fat uh, you know six, uh, eight inch stripes, dual stripes that you can get underneath the clear coat. It's got a, a killer audio system, uh, more options on wheels and things like that. So you can get a GTS anywhere from one hundred and twenty to. Up to 150. 000. But it's not just the trim; it's like the hood is different or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. There's two two portals on the because we tried to make the GTS more sophisticated. This is for, for people that want to go to car shows, go to go to Sonoma and, and go wine, you know, tasting or something like that, and and kind of hang out with their friends. The SRT is is that guy who probably drag races, have a little fun with it, and then the the new TA that we're launching right now is is the guy who does time attack and goes to track days. You know, so okay. So that that that's that's the big ballsy one. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be cool. So. Um, the the other the other SRT products that you have, of course, we talked about this when you came in because you have a 
a bunch of people here with you, and you <laughs> rolled up in the uh, the, the Grand Cherokee SRT8. Yeah. Now, I like that thing because it does things an SUV shouldn't do. Like, it's yeah. incredibly fast. Yeah. It sounds awesome. Now, did you – I know you raced one lap of America. Was it this past year? Uh, a few years back. A few years ago. Yeah. Did yeah. you do it in an SRT8 Jeep? Uh, what did you back do then? then I did a Challenger, actually. In a Challenger. SRT8 Challenger. I yeah. thought somebody ran it in a Jeep recently. And yeah. I, was, I thought it, I uh, That was one of our engineers. Marco Denitz uh, uh, took one a uh, last year's version and, and ran it. Now, and how badass really would well. that be? Just go around from track to track and just race, and then have the boss basically pay for it and say, "Take, uh, take our Jeep SRT." In the name of research. You know, so. <laughs> well, yeah. in, in speaking of work and the boss and all that, just take us through, uh, you know, an average Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, where where are you guys? Where do you go? Where where are you out of? I don't know. Okay, is, so is every, everything in that's a, a in Michigan. Question. Where is everybody? Yeah, so our, we're, our tech center is in Auburn Hills, Michigan, so, uh, about forty minutes north of Detroit. A huge complex. It's about it's second only to the Pentagon. It's like a wow. huge campus. It's a giant building. It has every possible function you could imagine in one building. There's no vipers at the Pentagon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. So I'm guessing. a typical day. I mean, we have every, the beauty of that building is you have engineering, design, lawyers. Everything is in there, right? So, uh, and my other job is design. Right? So we have a, a small building just for SRT engineering. We have about 60 engineers and mechanics that work on SRT. So they're kind of a special club. And the SRT engineer, you have to kind of be of a certain skill set and rank to kind of make it into the SRT fold. So it's a very highly regarded you know, and how many, place to how be. And how many are part of that group, SRT? Uh, about 60 uh, engineers and I think about 10 mechanics and then a few marketing people. that work So my – yeah. first off, it's got to be great down in the community lunchroom. How are those minivans going? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's a, it's a bit like that. Uh, SRT know. guys are over here eating sushi. You guys want some bugles from the uh, vending machine? Right. And the they're, minivan guys? Have, and they're have, just like you guys. They're, they're absolutely in love with cars. They race. They're hot rodders. They're, they're just the land of misfit enthusiasts. And so we, we would, take would, them all in. would you – now, so I'm like picturing a guy working on a door handle for a month. Or, you know, do you literally – Part the car out so, to a degree? In the case of the Viper, absolutely. So the engineering team engineers every inch of it. But in the case of like the Grand Cherokee, most of that is done by the, the, the platform team. And then we add our bits to make it an SRT. So they work on the big brakes. They work on the cooling, the engine, the powertrain. And right. even the paddle shifters, we tune everything uniquely. So the SRTs have a completely different character. Uh, so that's a that's where the you know the lunchroom conversation goes. <laughs> we get to kind of do the fun stuff, the exotic stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and a Jeep. You know th- that that's obviously that platform could end up with a straight six in it. No, V six, no. yeah, V6. a V six, a V six in it. But that that one on any any given Jeep could just end end up with a two hundred and eleven horsepower V six that's going to uh, you know the soccer mom, or it could end up with the fire breathing V eight and the, the big brakes yeah. and whatever. So that's a good example could... because we make a diesel version of the Grand Cherokee, we make a normal V eight, we make a V six, and the, our fire breathing four hundred and seventy horsepower. <laughs> now, how do you how do you decide which cars are going to be sucked into the SRT? That's a great question. It, they have to have good bones. The vehicles Brand. have to have fundamental stiff chassis, good dynamics from scratch. We're not going to do an SRT minivan as much as I'd love to do it, but mm-hmm. it, it has <laughs> to be. That'd be kind of badass, though, yeah, right? It would be. <laughs> they gave me the SRT. <laughs> Kenny Wayne Shepard would be the only one who has it. The SRT <laughs> they gave me the truck me. for a week. Once, and I remember just thinking, this is the most ridiculous vehicle that's ever been built. But that's what I think is so badass did, about it. Did you the, love it? I, I you it's know, so fast. It was insane, and it was a it was, five speed or six speed. It was the I, five, five speed. speed. It was a five speed with like a three foot long, like like I mean, it, it was a it was VW van esque length, <laughs> and it was like ridiculous trying to trying to feather the clutch out a little uh, and back it, that thing out of my driveway. I was driving it to Love Line and it, stuff, and. I just, oh, that's you're talking about the old truck. I'm talking about the old truck. He's talking oh, about the SRT oh, the Viper. ten. The oh, Viper, yeah. the, I'm the talking truck about with yeah. the manual transmission. I mean, the worst idea yeah. ever. Which is, we're just going to take this Dodge truck and we're going to shoehorn this Viper engine into yeah. it, and we're going to give it to Corolla for a week. Yeah, and that we're we're probably talking about uh, 2006 or five. Yeah, or it was something. Right, it was, yeah. Yeah. It was something, seven somewhere like that. Some yeah. somewhere in there, and I remember just thinking. I look ridiculous in this vehicle, <laughs> and if someone pulls up next to me in a Prius, crying, shaking well, I don't even think it was a Prius there, but I think you could just bump those right off the road. I have no answers for you. If, if you're if you're at an SRT or an SRT ten with a five with a manual transmission, yes. you could you just 
you just bump those things off the road. Yeah. It's and fine. those are becoming valuable now. People are <laughs> uh, Are they? Oh, now yeah. we're looking at it. Yeah, yeah, that's from SEMA a few years back. Somebody a built like a minivan. I SRT built one minivan. myself. I actually did one lap of America in a minivan in the <laughs> did you really? early 2000s. Yeah. What engine did you put in it? I actually upgraded. It came with a 3.3, and I found a junkyard 3.8 liter from the limited model or something like that. But you've been at Chrysler for 21 years. They wouldn't yeah. give you an engine. You had to go to the no, junkyard. No, no, all these weird things. <laughs> where where uh, you mentioned diesel earlier. And now a lot of companies are starting in. Maybe Lamar kind of started this with the diesel and the performance. Mm-hmm. No one ever went diesel and performance. They just sort of went diesel and you yeah. know long haul trucking. But now people are starting to realize, and with the cafe standards and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff and the clean stuff and everything, is there any SRT diesel anything looming in the future? That Not you immediately, can... long term. We actually talk about that. We have kind of these type of conversations at SRT all the time, and, and it's intriguing, right? We've seen what Audi's done, obviously, with great yeah, and you can power. have... I don't know. Lots you can you can bump up from eight hundred and seventy five foot pounds <laughs> to twelve hundred foot pounds. Yeah. I don't know what uh, I'm trying I to think of where you're where you're at right now in the torque department, but I'm guessing it's we, we got about oh, six hundred on the six hundred foot pounds. I mean, you could yeah. probably get to a thousand. Oh yeah, no foot pounds of torque <laughs> and, in a diesel. Yeah, in a in a Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know, you do an SRT diesel version of that. It's all wheel drive. It already hooks up like a monster. Oh. You give me ideas, I'm going to run off and build one of those now. <laughs> like a, a diesel SRT Grand yeah. Cherokee would be badass. You could probably just, you know, you can put down eight or 900 pound feet of torque. At zero to 60 would be like a rocket, and it probably gets like 23 miles a gallon, drives yeah. around. Don't fun. mind all the axles spitting out the bottom of the car. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Listen, I'm not the engineer here. I'm not the, <laughs> I'm not the engineer. There's guys. There's probably guys. But you have yeah. 60 guys. There's 60 guys that'll yeah. work on it. I think diesel is, uh, its day is coming. You know, when yeah. People are very interested in diesel. What, uh, <clears throat> Ralph, what are some of your, your favorite events, I mean, at, just outside of Dodge and SRT and whatever, but what stuff do you like to do I, for the enthusiasts out I there? I love going to um, car shows. Like, I go to Carlisle for my first, I went twice now, um, mm-hmm. and I uh, go to Spring Fest, which happens in Orange County here every spring. Uh, this is, I think, number eight coming up. Uh, amazing. With mm-hmm. all these owners, a thousand, you know, uh, Moparians, I call them, that, that congregate and celebrate their vehicles. Most of them are rear drive um uh, bigger cars that we make, like Challenger and Charger. Um, and, and I love SEMA. I love those kind of shows. I go to every auto show, every major auto show in the world I try to hit, you know, whether it's China or Germany or whatever, uh, and stay up, up on Just like a doctor goes to a conference, I have to kind of keep keep up on what's going on. Because that's mm-hmm. my other job. We haven't talked about that. But my main, my real job, my big job is, is uh, head of design for Chrysler Group. So I'm always kind of trying to see where the trends are going. And yeah. when you say see, I mean, check out the competition, kick their yeah. tires. But, but unfortunately, you're looking at the past, right? When you look at a car on the road, it was designed four or five years ago. So it's, right. you're just kind of trying to feel where trends are going. But I love watching culture, I mean, especially in America. You have from east to west, north to south, you have so many different cultures, and you have to study them and kind of anticipate their needs. Right. You know? And there's a very uh, interesting you know, thing going on in the U.S. right now. You've got people that are very much into cars, others that could care less about cars. You've got you know, green movement. You've got the electric drag racing going on. There's so many interesting things. We is, live in a great time. Is the audience here mm-hmm. more broken up compared to like when you go to the Tokyo show or something like that or the other countries just sort of focused like we're all small, we're all efficient, or we're all, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, trucks are raw. America whatever. is by far the most interesting because we have the big truck thing. You know, they don't have that at all. Yeah, we countries. love our trucks. Yeah. And in Tokyo, the cars are absolute bizarro sculpture things. They're, they don't even look like cars, you know. <laughs> and they're just trying to make a statement more so than actually solve a problem. So, so design plays a big influence there more than anything else, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. And well, the- but it is – it's interesting – well, I mean, we're we're more diverse, obviously. You know, if you go to Tokyo, people look kind of the same, and the cars look <laughs> kind of the same. You come to L.A., nobody looks the same. You nailed it. No. And none of the cars look the same, and some yeah. of the different cultures want the different cars. Right. So yeah. we kind of are represented. You know, you go to a used car lot, and you look <laughs> around, and it reminds me a lot of America. Yeah. You see a large black truck parked next to a and it's very small com- white minivan, <laughs> and then you see a little red Italian sports car over there, all coming together, all, yeah. all living under the same tent mm-hmm. with the funny balloons. Yeah. yeah, it is. But there is kind of that, and I really thought about if, if we all – if we were just a society that was – Asian or Hispanic or Germanic or whatever it is, we'd all be driving about the same thing. We're all over the place and, here, thus we need everything. And that's precisely why we set up SRT as a brand, because we, we speak to that consumer directly. You know, we market to them. It's small. We're not looking at a big volume. We want to go after exclusivity versus volume. So we, we do events with them. We hang out. We have websites just for them. 
and they feel special, and, and we're, we feel like a kindred spirit with our owners. You know? So where, where are we going to be with the supercar in, in 10 or 20 years? I, and, it, and I mean that more from, like, the government's hand in, in saying well, things, not really just from, you know. Well, you see it happening already. If you look at, like, the very high, the million-dollar cars, I call them, like the Porsche 918, right? Yeah, they're all, like, hybrids, right? Yeah, they're the, all the LaFerrari, right, the, the FF. You know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of that technology from F1 bleeding its way into, into production cars. But, of mm-hmm. course, it's a million-dollar car. But that yeah. stuff eventually will make its way down to... Two hundred thousand, one hundred thousand dollars cars. You'll see. I think you'll see hybrid and power technology combined, and you have your cake and eat it too. So you guys have to be at least looking at that now, thinking about well, how do oh, we yeah. take, how do we take what Ferrari's doing for two million dollars and really start to make it absolutely uh, more. I don't want to say for the masses, but something a little more attainable into a Viper. And then what are the, what are the real benefits? Are the benefits are like, so you get that electric motor and it acts like a nitrous shot around corners? Uh, funny story. Or... <laughs> I had uh, borrowed an engineer lent me the Fiat 500 electric because yeah. we developed that at Auburn Hills in, in uh, Michigan. And they had tuned it up to be full power, right? You know, they mediate the power so it'll go 99 miles or whatever it is. And it was like an absolute <laughs> nitrous shot thing, like pop like a cork. Right. Know? So like, yeah. that's the thing. It's yeah. like, you have that great battery power. If, if you don't have to go 99 miles, if you only have to go seven miles, yeah. how quick could that car go? Oh, it's incredible. It'll um, hurt, hurt you. John Krasinski, not to drop the celebrity name, Too late. who's married to Emily Blunt, <laughs> told me. Who lives uh, next door to you? <laughs> uh, Jimmy. Told me that his wife made him sell the Tesla S. Really? And so it was, it's, it's, it's funny because <laughs> I bought my house yeah. when I was married. Without telling my wife, <laughs> so when you tell me you sold your car because your wife made you sell, and yeah. so I'm, I just hear this giant whoops in the background, you know. <laughs> but I'm like, that's your. She has her own car, right? Yeah. yeah. No, me. And then we, of course, found out later. You know, you can program that in. But she said it was hurting her neck, like because acceleration. Yeah, because he didn't have the Tesla S programmed. For the smooth start, he just kept putting his foot into it, and when he put his foot into it, her head snapped yeah. back because of the instant torque. That's how you should drive that car. Motor. She's wrong. I agree too. Get a Hansa vice, sweetie. And quiet. That's right. <laughs> just, zip just, it. Just wear it backwards. Right? Just, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, put that Hansa vice on backwards and just zip it. But he said I had to sell the car because of that. Oh. Motor that electric. You know, he seems like a nice guy, but now Too you're nice. saying now Too you're nice. saying he's a puss. He needs a self. Too boy. nice. Some some would say. And she <laughs> is a, a sweet thing with a British accent, but later on, she needs the racing collar. She needs the the donut. <laughs> the somebody donut. told her or told him, "Look, you got to program that shit into the car because that's a problem." But yeah, if everyone is talking about. Zero to 60, and people are like, well, what are you going to do with these little electric cars? Oh, no, zero to 60, that's where they're going to kick everyone's ass. They're not going 203 miles an hour or whatever the Viper does, but the the zero to 60 part, yeah, that's just going to be about hooking up. I mean, you got all- <laughs> it's traction. Yeah, it's gonna be traction, mm. and that's why you need a diesel SRT Grand Cherokee because you <laughs> got all wheel drive. No, that's why you need Encore, baby. Encore <laughs> Insurance Services LLC for free life insurance quote. You give them a call eight six six three four seven fifty seven forty eight, or you can visit their website at smartterm dot com. Thinking about getting life insurance? Maybe you have coverage. Maybe you need a little bit more. Maybe you need a little talking to. Encore, we got one of our sales guys, uh, Kit, healthy, 37, non-smoker, got himself a 20-year, $500,000 policy for less than 30 bucks a month. So you need Encore. Give him a call, 866-347-5748. License and disclaimer information can be found on their website at smartterm.com. All right, uh, I think we're going to go look at a car. Uh, I also think that um, like my eBay is it the last my last blog, ah second to last second to last uh, eBay blog is up there making my peace with old Yeller. You know That's the title of your. I forgot when I was talking to um, I'm not talking to but I was looking I was working on this Paul Newman documentary and I was w- thinking about. We're interviewing, uh, going to interview John Morton and that bad crash he had and that scarab over there. Old Yeller was leading that race, basically, when Morton got in that horrible rollover crash over right over the top yeah. of uh, 
turn one at uh, Laguna Seca, which is right where everyone crashed in my race or with us with a BMW Batmobile. Yes. And uh, Ralph, you you know, Ooh. the BMW uh, uh, three liter 3.0 Batmobile, or maybe it was a 3.5, but anyway, the car just. Ugh. Yeah, you'd cry. Ouch. Yeah, ouch. But it was right in the this, exact same spot. This car you know, Ralph, don't you? This old yeller? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. you were a judge at Pebble Beach. Yeah. Don't you do that quite yeah, a bit? a couple of years. Yeah. 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 That's a badass gig, my, by the way. Yeah, that's a good gig. I'm kind of <laughs> bummed out because I couldn't go for two years and they stopped inviting me. I'm like devastated because oh. I did it for five years. So I'm like, if anyone's out there, please. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to Pebble again. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> Just for the food. <laughs> yeah. I would, uh, oh, the food, I just oh, have to the press surroundings. Yeah. Do you press your pants when you go there? You know, that place. We wore shorts <laughs> last a, time, it's actually. A little, so. <laughs> it's a little snobby for me. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a hodgepodge. Or the crumpets. Uh, you know, we usually go to the track, or oftentimes yeah. we're at the yeah. we're at the track. The track and then the quail lodge. My favorite part is walking the pits, right? The di- Everybody sets up these awesome dioramas. They look like vintage, you know, as yeah. it was. So cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I love reading everyone's storyboard yeah. of, you know, where the car ran and what it what it was in and the old pictures of the guys. I, I like the, the guys at the track that race the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang cars and they got the costumes on and everything. No, you don't. No, they're cool. No, you they're don't fun like to talk to guys. What with the wick, wicker baskets that are strapped onto the back of the car? They got like they got like Dennis Gage mustaches and stuff. Yeah. They're fun to talk to. Those are the ladies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they got the crazy mustache wax and the wicker baskets and stuff. The cars aren't really that exciting to see race. They're kind of slow. But no, I, I know. But the, the the great thing about that is just the, like we just spoke about the insane variety, just the yeah. insane stuff from just stuff that's. Almost modern and fast as shit to just uh, old chitty chitty bang bang stuff. And then every once in a while, you see the guy with the three wheels, two wheels in the front, and the air cooled motorcycle uh, engine in was front. That a Morgan? Uh, whatever Morgan it is, I just yeah, want to send that guy home. I just want to go <laughs> listen. This is not for golf carts here, buddy. You got, you, first off, you need four wheels to participate in this. Secondly, it's this thing is air cooled. Thirdly, we don't need an engine in front of the axle. <laughs> Of the front axle. It either, <laughs> of course, I, there's Leno driving There's one. Leno. I don't need this. You, you know what? Leave it to Leno to have yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> he's got one. Oh, he's got the the motorcycle engine in the front. Yeah. That's I what I'm what that saying. Is. That's not a Morgan, though. It's something else. I forgot yeah, what it is. It's some kind of kit. Yeah. I don't yeah. think, I know this is going to sound insane. I don't think Leno owns one of those. I don't think he does. But what, But it's a car. Yeah. So by law, he must own it. No, and on Jay Leno's garage, they feature a bunch of cars he doesn't actually own. Oh, I mean, he's, okay. You know, so it's it's a show like this. We hey, get the greatest, cars in the all the greatest time. call I've ever got in my life was Leno just called me on my cell phone once. He's like, hey, I don't know. I was like, what's going on? Hey, um, oh, shit. What's his name? He's doing a... Bernard? No, doing a... Go- no, no, the uh, the actor shit. Yeah. Um, he's doing a uh, ad for Gucci. And uh, he needs a car. And, oh, and, yeah, yeah. And I was like... Uh, who was that? Oh, we'll figure the guys. Because we were going to The guy who hosted the Oscars uh, two, three years ago didn't work out so well. But he <laughs> we said, already forgot his name. He said, oh, he's a nice guy. <laughs> but he's doing a Gucci spot, you know? Yeah. And, and he needs a car. He needs a sexy car. And I said, so give him one of, you know, give let him use yours. one of your cars. And he said, uh, he wants a Lamborghini uh, 350 GT, and I don't have one. Yeah, and I said I have a car that? that you don't have. Oh well, they'll tell you in a second. Yeah, a, yeah, he'll will find it online. Leno doesn't have a 350 GT. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking loser, God. James Franco. James yeah, Franco. That's that's, that's it. what it is. Yeah, you're right. He didn't do a very good job. <laughs> By he, the way, he didn't do the Gucci ad with the with the Lamborghini. I saw the Gucci. <laughs> I saw the spot. There oh, is yeah. a GT, a 350 GT. Oh, it's not yours. Fucking I didn't bring it out there. Fucking two-timing me. <laughs> it was not mine. Wait, are you sure it wasn't yours? Because Wait I didn't bring minute. it out there. No. All right. So uh, you can go to eBay Motors blog. <laughs> you can check out second to last uh, blog. And you hit the app. And again, you know, you know, like if you're like us, you like to just hang out there. All right, Ralph. Let's go out in the parking lot and uh, take a very good look at what you brought us. All right. Well, here it is. Uh, this is the TA. Uh, yeah, it's time attack. It's and 
So this this is basically the how much lighter is it? It's actually uh, it's in between because we actually put heavier brakes on it, so mm -hmm. it's about thirty uh, three hundred and ninety pounds or so. So it's pretty light. So this, so this is a light this, car. This yeah, is the okay. third. This is the most racy version, like you were saying in the in the studio. Yeah. The 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 Viper, the GTS, and the TA, and this one's m more of the racy version. Yeah. It's, it's if you're gonna. Is the of, suspension a little stiffer? Yeah. It's stiffer, more stiffer suspension. It has a two mode suspension, so there's a race and street mode. Um, it's got a very very nice Brembo uh, thick. It's a weird word, thick annulus rotor, which means it's got more of a surface area than the basic uh, brake system. And we still have a 14-inch brake because we believe in, in uh, not upsizing the wheel to keep the weight down. Mm -hmm. They're 18s and 19-inch wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got some active uh, aero de devices. There's a, a splitter in the front and a, uh, a wing in the back. At VMAX, it makes close to 600 pounds of downforce, which is 193. So we actually lose about 15 miles per hour because of the, the downforce. The downforce. That's how much more downforce it has. The... Um Rear 335s? They're, that's where they used to be. Now they're 355. And the front is 200. They didn't make it we, 355. Yes, we, yeah, we actually... So got to make it There's a little uh, factoid for you guys. We have the largest rubber of any car period in the world. Even more than the Bugatti Veyron. So yeah, 355 is a huge big. tire. Yeah, as it's big as it, as it gets on a... Basically, it's 19? They're 19s in the back and, and 18s in the front. 19. And we have 12... Uh huh. 19 by t uh, 10, and the back is 19 by 13. 13. Yeah, people, so. By the way, when you see, <laughs> it's gotta be like when you see a 13 tough, inch, right? when you it's see a, a, a one piece, when you see a 13 inch rim without the tire on it, it oh, huge. looks yeah. massive. Yeah. Like it, it, 13 inches doesn't sound as big as this thing feels. Uh, with the bead, it's 14. <laughs> but either way, it just right. feels like a. Yeah. Tube. And the other, and it has a very low center. Of, all Vipers do. It's a, a 17 inch um, center of gravity, so it's very low. So if you can get the rubber to work, the car's got incredible grip. So, so you say 17 inch center of gravity. Yeah, off the off the ground. So, so how does that work? Like I, 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 because so, I'm not, I don't know so that. If you were to measure with the center of gravity where the car rotates, it's about 17 inches off the ground. Uh -huh. Most cars are in the 20 inches, 19 inches. Because everyone is yeah. always sort of talking in terms of its stance. Yeah. Like yeah. this sits five inches off the ground or something. Yeah. But the center, like the CG of an airplane. Exactly. And the car's 50 50 weight distribution. If you want to open the hood, it has um, the engines, kind of like the cars we were talking exactly. about earlier. It's in oh. here. The, yeah. the hood popper's in the vent. I like the, in, that. the engine is way behind the axle. Wow. Unlike that Morgan thing we talked about. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. about. It's it sits about, about six inches behind the axle, and that's what gives it the 50, 50 weight to So, and, and as, as we've learned, I guess, sort of technically a mid-engine, a front, yeah, front mid-engine, because like, it's behind the front yeah. axles. I love uh, this. You were just at the track. Yeah, you could tell, right? <laughs> the tires. Yeah, we did some shakedown work today. We're, the uh, tires are... Yeah, those are the Corsa Pirelli tires. The, um, is there ever any... Well, it's a stupid question, but is, ever, you know... Ever any discussions of supercharged, turbocharged, or we just like the natural aspirated? Um, natural aspirated, it's always been what we've been about, but our owners do a lot of that. Uh, twin turbos and superchargers mm -hmm. are very popular, so we've actually made the engine with forged pistons, so it, it actually can handle uh, pressure charging, we call it. So we encur we kind of softly encourage the aftermarket. We can't, you know, outright, you know, endorse anything, but we we, we know it happens. A lot of these guys, what the most popular thing to do with Vipers is the Silver State uh, Classic. Yeah, 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 sure. And the, the car, it's had many records at that particular race, so it's a very popular car. For, for so, yeah. how much compression is in the engine? It's about 11 to 1 compression. Okay, and yep. surprisingly, back in the day, it seemed like you could never supercharge 11 yep. to 1 compression, but now with the electronics yeah, and the... It's the, computers, and it's about no yeah. pre-detonation. You can still so run you can 8 pounds of boost in that thing. You know, we found out about the Viper owners, they're basically grown-up hot rodders. They're, they had yeah. a car, you know, a Mustang 5 liter when they were young, and they did all that stuff, and they got a little more money, and, they, and, the, and the Viper became the thing they aspire to. And most of them hot rod the cars. I mean, I would say every third Viper gets modified. Yeah, to some but why degree. wouldn't you? It's a cool car, and well, if you can make it, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's still it's, simplistic, right? It's in the uh, boy. Well, that is a short throw shift. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that bugged us. We used to have a school bus type shifter right. thing going on, so we yeah. shortened it, and we worked with Tremec, our um, our supplier, to, to shorten the. Throws. And the materials. So it's carbon fiber. You can see how light the hood is. It's right. all, it's all um, uh, beautified carbon, actually. We make it clear-coated so you can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The roof is carbon. The deck lid's carbon. And this is actually hot-stamped aluminum. So is the sill. Um, so the, and this kind of technology that just wasn't available yeah, you unless it was aerospace exactly. three years you, ago. The shapes you see there, aluminum hates to be stamped. You cannot stamp aluminum to save your life. But if you heat it up, 
and then before it crystallizes, you hit it, and then you mm-hmm. get shapes like that. And well, should we fire it up and uh, I see think what so. it sounds see what like? It's got it's got side exhaust there, big guy. Oh, jeez, I forgot <laughs> about that. Yeah. Wow, that looks good. So the V the V ten has its own sound. You know, yeah, it's very sounds, unique. Sounds like a pissed off dad, <laughs> <laughs> just like coming home from work after a really shitty yeah. day. Yeah. God damn. And people say it's loud. And it's one of those things. It's an you know getting in a Viper is an intense experience. It's the minute you strap it in, it's like you're having an experience. You're and I it. notice, uh, you know, as far as the gauge cluster, it one one big tack in yeah, the so middle. Like, yeah. Speedo on the left. It looks digital. Yeah, you know, when you're, when you're out there tracking it, the tech's all you really care about. So we use our first 7-inch screen. It's all electronic, yeah. and it allows us to put um, oil temp, water temp, oil pressure. So you can customize it. You can actually move things where you want and, and uh, what you think matters to you. But I'm really proud of the interior. I think we, we, that's what we did learn from our friends from Europe. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Is working with low-volume suppliers to so get leather wrapping and stitching. Yeah, it's really, yeah, really it's definitely come, come a long, long way. way. Yeah, really it's... come a long way. And the materials and, yeah, the seats... And the s- seats are very um, taut, and, 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 and it, it is a very European thing, which is a kind of a less is more. Don't yeah. make big bark of laundry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, e- I, even I, if they're, the bolsters are big, have it come up, but don't have it be a big yeah. sofa pillow on I there. drove a Gen 1 Viper, and although this is still a Viper, don't think this is any, by any means the same no, car. It's a this night is and day beautiful. Yeah, it drives is different. Incredible. And the, the steering, one of the best things we did is the X brace. That's something that came from our racing background. Mm-hmm. And it made the uh, the steering telepathic. It's absolutely linear now. Are they all carbon um, fiber or just on the TA? Uh, on the TA, and it's optional. Um, the normal car comes as an aluminum cross brace. The okay. TA comes standard with the uh, carbon fiber. So, Ralph, where I went to toss out a website if people want to see the car, drive learn SRT. more about it. Drive SRT. DriveSRT.com. And lots of info, a lot of uh, backstory. My favorite part is his interviews with the actual engineers, so you get to kind of learn, you know, you can see the passion in their interviews. When they're right. talking about the cars, they just start to get excited, All as, right. as I seem to, I guess. You know? Yeah. Well, listen, it's your baby, and you're proud of yeah. it. You should yeah, be proud a, of it. It's a company's yeah. baby. And talk about longevity of a company. I keep, This keeps coming up in my head. Is, is, is You've been there for <laughs> 21 years and I've worked the for the same brand, and yeah. you just started off in the design team. And now you it's you know it's been awesome. I mean, Chrysler is yeah, it's been around a long time. Chrysler's been around over almost a hundred years now. Um, and I've worked there twenty one years as you said, I've worked for seven different CEOs. And I would say right now in this time it's the most fun I've ever had and we're actually working harder than ever. Uh, our, our new boss, Roger Marchioni, is a visionary. He is, oh, yeah. He's so Seen in love. In 60 Minutes. Yeah, he, exactly. Passionate. And he's cool. You would love him. He'd be an awesome interview because he's, he's, he's well, just so affable and Italian guys and are passionate. And then you mix them with cars. <laughs> and he's and I, he lets me go to I can go to work like this. So I love it. I don't have to wear a tie anymore and just be myself. And, and that, that culture has permeated the whole company. It's a can-do spirit, and yeah. uh, well, it's like it's never a, count us out, you know. An so. awesome product you've created, Thank Ralph, you. and Thank uh, thanks for coming by. Bring whatever you want, whenever <laughs> you want to bring it by. Until next time, this is Adam for Ralph and Matt saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs>